Hello and welcome back to another edition of CLX Foundry Live. I'm your host, DJ Blue PDX, and here with me, of course, our technical expert and today's build master, it's Paul Steffens. Hi, hey. Paul. Hey, how's it going? How are you? I'm good. doing good. Apparently, uh, a little lonely. Apparently better than Christian's doing. Oh, yeah, that's uh, Christian for sure. is <laughs> Sadly, out, uh, out, out mm -hmm. today. So um, we hope to get better, Christian. Uh, but guess what? <clears throat> it means we've got our hands full with an amazing new piece of equipment. Now we had this featured at PAX West, and it was honestly really impressive and beautiful. Uh, our marketing manager Nicole uh, created this breathtaking booth, which we will show coverage of here in a little bit, I believe. We didn't really talk about that, but yeah, we have a video of it. It's going to be awesome. Um, <laughs> free Christian, damn it. Mm -hmm. uh, there we go. So, but right now, well, let's take a look at what we're gonna be doing. We've got a Sekuda edition, which is now one of our, I believe we have five custom edition uh, PCs that we can do. And it's going to be awesome. So let's talk a little bit about what you're gonna be putting into that PC today. Alrighty, so we'll go over the specs first and then I'll show the case. Um, pretty excited about this case, honestly. It's been, we've been getting plenty of orders in for it. So uh, starting out, we've got a Ryzen 9 5900X. That's going to be our CPU. That's a beefy. Get it on here. Yeah, there we go. If I can get the right angle, there we go. Um, to cool that, we've got an Intermax Liquax 3 um, RGB white. So this is going to look really nice in that case. Um, yeah that opened up i know the rgb's turned out so well in that pc at pax it, it looks really great um, for our motherboard we've got an msi x570s edge max wi-fi nice it's a really this nice thing looking looks board. like a beast it yeah. does it does um, and then our memory for this order uh, we've got uh, 32 gigs uh, which is going to be two sticks of 16 gig 3600 uh, G Skill Trident Z Neo. Right. Very nice. Go bigger. Go home. Build. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then for our OS drive and our storage drive, we've got two Kingston NVMe one terabyte M.2 drives. Awesome. <clears throat> awesome. That's definitely enough. Uh, that's enough storage space to last for a minute. Mm -hmm. That's enough for like two installations of. Uh, Warzone. <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, powering this all, we've got an EVGA 750 watt gold GT, fully modular. We'll show nice. that in a little bit. And our video card for this is going to be a uh, Founders Edition 3080. So my nice. favorite model here. Looks really nice, very clean. Yeah. Oh, that's Very a really good cut. shot. You can see all the heat sinks in there too. I really like that. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. um, awesome. To, to cool all this, we've got uh, our CLX RGB case fans. We're going to be doing seven in this build. Um, so we'll we'll talk a little bit about the design that we're putting them in. Um, right there, and then I'll grab the case, which is definitely going to be the star of the show, and we'll get started. Nice. <clears throat> All super right. excited about this here we go i'm very so, excited to be building this yeah yeah um it it's a it's a it's a gorgeous concept and i once you see it it's interesting because as beautiful it is as it is on screen it's uh and i say this as a compliment to the design it, it in person it is 18 times better Not it's really uh, it's absolutely incredible and this, of course, is a full-size O11 case available. It is the raw edition. Um, and we have actually uh, multiple different... Uh, Nicole's in here. Hi. Yes, uh, Nicole helped design. Wait, now, Nicole, did you design this one? Was this your concept or...? Because I know Nicole designed the our entire booth, like the color schemes, all the plushies. Um, it's incredible. So I, I liked it. And uh, of course, with that white and the RGBs, they reflect off the inside. It colors everything on the inside. You get this brilliant explosion of color. And that's one of the things I love. So while you're prepping this case, let's talk a little bit about, uh, it, it's your concept, Nicole? Nice. And Kyle designed it. You do do well. I actually got to meet with Kyle yesterday. That's uh, a lot of the designs uh, there at CLX and exceedingly talented. So while you're getting this case set up, uh, mm -hmm. and I know it was popped into the chat into our chat let's uh, can we throw into chat the link for all the custom builds because this is not the only custom build that we offer at clx gaming 
So uh, there is, there, there are five, I believe, five different um, special editions that we have over there. And if you will head on over to uh, clxgaming.com uh, slash clx-special-editions, <clears throat> you can get there. There are, you've got the, the Sakura, and I believe I'm saying, am I saying that correct? Sakura? I believe I'm saying that correctly. Sounds right to me. Um, yeah, the Sakura edition. Plus, you've got the CLX Vice editions that uh, come on the. That that's the that's the. That's our OLED the, the, as well. Yeah, yeah the DXL. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and actually, the the second actually comes both on uh, the O11 DXL and the uh, Evolve Tower. Yeah. Both yeah. of them. So two different styles for all your needs. I of course got the the raw edition, which is red and it's gorgeous. That's a that's another great configuration. And then we've down at the bottom we've got the powder series, which is introducing powder pink and powder blue. So all things I love. And that's just the beginning. I can't wait to see what else gets uh is coming down the road. So now that you've got the main frame taken care of, uh next up I believe is the motherboard. That's right, yep. Yeah, well I'll start building the motherboard here. Be a good we can show this off as well. It's like we said <laughs> earlier, this is a really nice looking motherboard. Yeah. And uh, Young Sweezy's in here. Young Sweezy and I used to work together at Microsoft, ironically. <laughs> oh, nice. um, yeah, I can guarantee Sweezy, if I were to try and build this PC, it would take a considerably <laughs> longer amount of time. <laughs> considerably longer amount of time. Uh, and of course, anybody in chat, if you have questions about any of the components, the hardware, the procedures, or uh, why we're doing things in certain orders, please feel free to ask. We uh, try and explain everything that we're doing each week for all of our new viewers, but sometimes we, uh, you know, we want to make sure we're covering all of that, all of your questions. Now, one of the things I want to look at, that that board's got a lot of, I would say a lot of plating. That, that it does. Basically the Terminator of motherboards. Right, yeah, it's got a lot of heat <laughs> sinks on this look thing. Look at that. It's got some good weight That's... to it as well. If you hold it, you can feel it. That's uh, interesting. Well, this is kind of, this is an exceedingly powerful uh, motherboard as we're going in here. And just so everybody understands, what, what are your first steps when you're putting this together that you're following for your style of building? So what I like to do first is my M.2 drives. Um, they're the easiest things to install. So I like to get those out of the way. Um, on this board right here, I'm taking off our heat shields for those. Um, another really nice thing about this board, um, all three M.2 slots have heat shields on them. Um, so that's not awesome. something you see on every board. Usually it's just the top one or sometimes mm -hmm. there isn't one, so. So, so here comes, comes a question. If you have a motherboard that only has one NVMe heat shield, um, how do you know which one to put under it? Or which one is the is the better bet to put under the heat shield? Yeah, so I would if you have multiple M.2 drives um, and you only got one heat shield, I definitely put um, the heat shield on top of the one that you're going to be storing your games on. That one's going to okay. be accessed in a lot more, um, so it's going to heat up heat up a little bit more than your standard OS drive. Uh, Sweezy asked, "Have you done a water cooling build yet?" Well, we. I believe every build we've done so far is liquid cooled with AIOs, mm -hmm. but we haven't done an open loop system yet. Right, yeah, we have not but, done one uh, of those on the stream yet, but we did just we have, have one get filled it. up with fluid in the, in, the, in the shop today, so that was pretty cool to see. Nice, and there were some great ones that we saw at PAX as well. Uh, it was really neat to look at and finally get to lay eyes on some really interesting open loop systems, so I I'm excited to see what we can do once it gets to that point. Uh, so as you can see, you're putting that in there and we're getting the, that installed first. And then what's next for you? All right. So after this, I'm going to start, um, I'll, I'm going to start putting the stuff on the board for the liquid cooler. So it'll be the bracket for it. We'll get it all open here. I'll show you These AIOs come with, um, brackets for every type of chipset, um, or every CPU socket. Um, Interesting. so we're gonna, you know, pick through that and make sure we get the one for AM4. Gotcha. So let's take a look at uh, at this motherboard because this motherboard is is kind of beastly. This is an MPG X five seventy S Edge Max Wi Fi. Uh, it is definitely in a I would say upper tier for boards as it goes. Uh, it one of the, one of the marketing elements for it. It says it has a six layer PCB with two ounces of thickened copper. Mm. What does that mean? All right, so that's going to refer to the actual. Um, 
the actual width of the board itself here. So let me um, let me lift this up and I can show you a little bit once I get this in here. So that PCB is this actual computer chip board um, oh, or computer okay. board, whatever you want to call it. Um, but this is the layers of PCB. So having those layers and having them reinforced um, is going to have better, um, just it's going to conduct electricity better um, and just run it through all the tracers and stuff like that. Gotcha. So that, that, that's going to last much longer than, say, a, a thinner board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to last longer, um, a lot less chance of failure, you know, just going through that. Yeah. I do know that it does have PCIe steel armor uh, protection. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what, what exactly, how is that beneficial? Yeah, so um, if we can actually switch back to that top shot real quick. Um, so you can see these are our PCIe slots right here. You see different lengths. Yeah. Um, but these mm -hmm. two shiny ones are reinforced ones. Um, so that's what that's referring to. We're obviously putting a decently heavy video card in this, some heavier than others, but this 30A does have a lot of weight to it. Um, and what we've seen is there's some GPU sag um, and he heavy cards and older boards, and that uh, slot can actually break. Um, so having that reinforced oh, wow. um, <coughs> is, is actually really important if you're using a big card. Something to be looking for when you, you know, if you're building your own PC at home, definitely pay attention to those little elements, little things that I would say accent that uh, longevity right there. Mm -hmm, <clears throat> for sure. Now, one of the things that this board is uh, is known for is a brand new thing called the M.2 Shield Freezer or Frozer, as it, as it were, um, and it's a thermal solution apparently to try and keep SSDs from overheating. How is that different? Uh, you got to look at it up up close. Does it is it look different in design than say other heat sinks that we've seen on other boards for M.2s? Um, it does look slightly different, um, but as far as performance goes, as long as it's a decent metal and it's got good contact there, it's going to cool. Um, you can see it's got these grooves cut into it. Um, yeah. Those obviously look nice on the board, make it look better, but the air is going to flow through that groove and help cool it as well. Oh, wow. Okay. Nice. Nice. This thing uh, comes with quite a few little bells and whistles uh, as far as its output. It's got a two and a half gig Dragon port, which uh, MSI has been putting on a lot. We've seen this a lot on boards that we've done here on the show recently. Uh, it, it's That's a massive Ethernet flow. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot different than, say, a standard uh, 10... Uh, 10 100 but oh, you know yeah, 10 100 ethernet 10, 100. what's the what's the big advantage here especially for gaming yeah so the big advantage you're obviously going to get better uh connectivity speeds lower pace lag um that that type of stuff and then obviously if you're connecting it to say like a home network or something like that you're going to have better transfer speeds as well gotcha perfect uh, as yeah. far as ports, now, interestingly enough, this does still <clears throat> have an old school keyboard port. It does, yeah, the old PS2. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, some boards have them, some boards don't. Um, I know if you if you somehow end up in a situation where everything seems to be failing and that, that port will still work as a default, I just don't know that anybody actually would have has a keyboard <laughs> yeah. with that port on it anymore. I know, I know. I don't know if maybe there's some sort of regulation that the board manufacturers have to keep one port <laughs> available on there or something. Um, I can't imagine there would be, but yeah. you know, it's uh, interesting. I did notice there is uh, you've got two IR ports there. Mm -hmm. Looks like I, I believe one. Uh, we said is it a two inputs or was it an in and out? Looks like it's uh, just an input here. Um, okay. So, yep. Those on the side that look like those are uh, IR ports. I believe if you're looking at it from the side, it's at the top. There's actually a couple buttons yeah. there that'll let you oh. clear your CMOS. Um, oh and, wow! And do some stuff with the BIOS. That is so much easier mm -hmm. um, than having to go in and use the pin system. Anybody who knows much about the pin system. Uh, knows that you used to have to, to clear C must go in and there's a little tiny set of pins that you had to adjust and take and switch from one pair over to another and then back to reset your CMOS. Yeah, that's right. It was the yeah. most yeah, one annoying thing be because you had if you dropped it, finding that thing was imp was just virtually impossible. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Uh yo, Dragon Knight's in here. Hello Celestial, how are you? 
So yeah, this that makes it so much easier. That's it's one of those things where when you see it on a board, you have to start asking, how come we didn't think of this sooner? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and some boards will put like physical buttons on top of the PCB as well. Um, but it's nice having it on that IO shield because you obviously don't have to open up the case if you want to hit them. Yeah, that's that makes it so much easier. And the less you have to open up your your machine, the better. Let's just be mm -hmm. honest. Once it's once it's set and ready to go, it's set and ready to go. Uh, multiple different. Uh, USBs in here, you've got a full surround sound level audio in here, plus the IR on the bottom that's down there next to the sound panel. Uh, HDMI out and let's see, it's got, this has multiple. I'm trying to count how many we've got on there on the board as far as our USBs go. Yeah, let's try I have the total. Let me take a look at that real quick. I believe we've got one Type C, uh, three Gen Two Type As, four Gen One Type As, and then one or two Two Point Os. Um, nice. So what's that? Nine kind what? of standard USBs and one Type C. It sounds sounds about right. So um, now, one of the things that I noticed, and it's listed on our website. When you click on the little information about a motherboard. It says things like ports internal, ports rear. Uh, what is the diff? What, what are those in re referring to? Yeah, so uh, let me show you here. So obviously, this is what most people will be familiar with, is um, like these blue USBs. These are our three point um, That's what most people see. So that would be our um, external. But our internal USB three point port is going to look like this. What I've got my finger on here. This one has okay. two, it's kind of hard to see from this angle. Maybe this one might be a little better. So these pins right here. So our 3.0 that's on our case has a cable coming out the end. Oh. And th this is where it's gonna plug into. Um, and then gotcha. these small ones are 2.0 right here. And this is our type C connector. And we also have a type C on our case. So we're gonna plug that into there as well. That makes so much more sense. I get it. Mm -hmm. It's all the little things that I look at and realize, eh, I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, this does, <laughs> this has uh, high speed Wi Fi built into the board, which is something that uh, isn't necessarily consistent on all motherboards, but this has got it. It's a Edge Max Wi Fi for, uh, for the board. What does that mean, and, and uh, what can this thing do? Yeah, so this has onboard Wi-Fi, and I believe the last build we did, we showed um, the onboard Wi-Fi as that on, on that one, and this one's a little differently. So that last one we showed it actually had an M.2 Wi-Fi slot, just kind of like how mm -hmm. there's the M.2 slots here. Um, this one, you can see the antenna's coming out of the I.O. shield. If I were to take this cover off, the card is actually right in there in its own little M.2 slot. Um, so there's no antenna right on this, it's just all right there. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Wow. I wonder how that affects reception. I mean, obviously it doesn't, it's, can't be too bad since they put it in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, yeah. All right. So as far as that's concerned, this, uh, the, the wireless networking options are all the way across the 802.11 uh, band. Plus it's got Bluetooth uh, 5.2 in there as well. So, which makes things a lot nicer. So right now he's putting that Cooler Max on there. That is a 240 liquid AIO. That means mm -hmm. it is all in one cooling through that radiator. Uh, and the more I learn about this, the more I learn about these every week, the more fascinated I am uh, by the AIO systems. Especially how many different uh, styles and types there are. <clears throat> yeah, the so. AIOs are just, yeah, they're all over the place now. We have a whole bunch, a whole bunch to choose from. This Intermax one looks really nice. Um, awesome. As far as colors go, uh, the board itself does have RGB on it. So definitely going to add to that color scheme that's going on inside of the build. It'll reflect nicely off that white interior, and it's also going to add to all the effects that are going to be happening in there from the fans. Which, one of the things that I noticed on the second edition is the fact that the lights behind the tree, behind the, the, blo the tree blossom tree, Mm -hmm. It 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 lights it up. It illuminates it from from behind. It looks spectacular. So yeah, it really does. This is our this is I mean it's my favorite design that we've done so far. This one looks really good. So as you can see, those big screws are mounting down into the bracket, the, the brace that you put on the back. Mm -hmm. 
and that's just going to keep this thing from coming undone. Uh, this does come with its own flux, uh, flux paste. Don't thermal, thermal paste. Thermal paste. Yeah. There yeah, we yeah. go. Uh -huh. uh, and of course, if you're going to be purchasing one from us, you can also upgrade that thermal paste to flux thermal paste, which is a CLX specialty, uh, and it just increases the long, increases the life. The, what is it? The lifelong usability of it. Yeah, but what is the what's the advantage of CLX bit. flux? Yeah. So the biggest advantage you're going to have some lower CPU temps with that. Um, so that's really good. If you're going to overclock your system, definitely recommend going with that. It'll let you get a higher overclock since it, since you will have lower temps, which is nice. And of course, overclocking is another thing that CLX offers. It can be done in house uh, by the professionals who know how to do it. I'll be one of the first. I'll, I'll admit, as I always do, I have overclocking available on my PC and I don't know what it how to do it, so I just don't do it. And it's I'm wondering how many other people just don't because they don't want to break their gear uh, when ordering from you guys. They can just get it done in-house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Um, it's definitely something, you know, I, you can watch videos and try to figure out, but it's good to have a professional do it for you. And you obviously are still covered by our warranty if you do go with that. Yeah, absolutely. And that, uh, that warranty, we, we usually talk about that at the end, but we'll bring it up now. The All of our gear comes with a one-year parts and lifetime labor and technical support warranty, which means if you have an issue with your gear, just call in. They can help you out right here, and it's, it's no charge. All right, so what all I'm right. doing now, I'm about to put the motherboard in. I'm going to see how I'm going to mount this 240 in here, and then I'll put my fans on the cooler as well. Yeah, so I, I was going to ask gonna that. This. Yeah. So, so we're going to have the 240 up top, um, and then there'll okay. just be another fan next to it for our regular exhaust. So this is the first time I've seen us use a 240 in an area where usually a 360 is uh, is placed. Mm -hmm. So so now it'll just be the, the radiator next to a single fan that's, that's mounted directly to the case. Yep, that's right. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, as far as the Ryzen's go, this, uh, let's... Prod, let's let's chat about the processor real fast. It's a Ryzen 9 5900X. Mm -hmm. uh, it says it's 3.7 gigahertz and it's a 12 core. What else can you tell me about this processor? Yeah, so like I said, it's a Ryzen 9 5900X. Uh, 12 core processor with uh, 24 thread, so it has Ryzen's multi-threading on there, um, which is nice. It does have a boost clock up to 4.8, um, wow. which is really good. So it's going to try to... Um, boost that up if it deems necessary. If the game you're playing, you know, needs it or wants it, and it can cool enough, it's going to go up to that. Is it normal to get a full gigs worth of increased speed when you're overclocking a processor? Um, a full nowadays, yes. Um, I feel like it was probably a little um, lower back in the day, um, but we have such good cooling. Um, cooling options now that we can really get it up there because really you're only limited by the amount you can cool it i believe there's some crazy setups where people use like dry ice or liquid nitrogen and just get some crazy temperatures so i feel like there is so much room for so much to go wrong yeah <laughs> yeah there probably like, is liquid nitrogen and electronics i just i'm just not exactly sure how smart that is i mean it's i mean i guess hydrogen is the one that's really explosive but <laughs> <laughs> but who's going to cool their machine with right. nitrogen? <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. Dry ice. I even thought about like a refrigerator setup, but then you got to deal with condensation and all that. So. Yeah, that would be a. Be, you know, we had to deal with that at Outpost Discovery one <laughs> one stop. We did not think about the fact that when they finally turned on the AC, because they didn't turn it on when we were setting up, we were in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And they turned on, we showed up, we'd set everything up the night before. We show up at the event on Friday to open everything up. They turned the AC on overnight to finally cool it down in there. And the condensation from these big giant steel tubes, nobody noticed that one of our tables full of Xboxes uh, and some of our PCs were near where that was all dripping down. And oh, oh no. my, oh, scared the living daylights out of me. We were so fortunate that it not do, it didn't get neat on any of the CLX uh, PCs that we had there, Man. which was great. Yeah. Is uh, yeah. I feel yeah. like we all would have had a panic attack at that point. Seriously. <laughs> that whole table sat and dried for a good several hours. <laughs> so, and which of course brings me back around to that whole moisture thing and what, um, 
Who's out there wasting delicious liquid nitrogen? Yes, exactly. Um, so uh, Mayakin says it's not the liquid nitrogen uh, you worry about. It's the condensation resulting from it. Oh, that's another that brings us right back to that condensation mm -hmm. concept. Um, yeah, I, I would wonder how you would achieve dissipating that condensation fast enough so it doesn't risk any type of uh, moisture event inside of the inside of the case. Um, which, you know, that that there's I have so many questions that I want to look up as soon as we're done with the show. I'm looking yeah. up liquid nitrogen cooling builds because I want to see how it's done. <laughs> have you seen um, um, have you seen any of the mineral oil builds like the fish tank builds? OK, have I have seen I have seen those where they where mm -hmm. they submerge it in liquid. Yeah, they get a case that's basically like an aquarium that's fully sealed and then they just fill it to the top with mineral oil. So that one's pretty so, cool, too. First of all, that seems there. I, I again, I have so many questions about any type of a liquid, but I guess mineral oil doesn't. It's not conductive, right? Yeah, that's the key is it's not conductive. So it can, Interesting. It can your every component can be on there and, and it's fine. It won't short out <clears throat> and it obviously provides great cooling. So I, yeah, I was going to say that's it sounds uh, as I'm thinking about it, like it, I feel like you could really get efficient cooling but mm -hmm. across the board not just for your cpu but your gpu however yeah. fans wouldn't necessarily work so would you have to uh remove the housing from the uh from the graphics card or would you just leave the fans on there and they'll just putter around uh, the ones that i've seen they leave the fans on there interesting they just kind of spin i know they usually have like a pump in there um i'm fascinated i i'm I'm thoroughly intrigued right now. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I went to a local tech school here many years ago, and that was one of like the coolest things in the first A plus course. Like that was in the window. It looked like an aquarium. It had like the aquarium rocks and little fake fish floating around. It was the computer. So. <clears throat> oh, that's even, even bit better. Yeah, it was really cool. I mean, this is, wow. Um, Mike says frequently see people use Vaseline around the CPU bracket to prevent condensation shorting it while doing the LN2 cooling. That's interesting. Also non-conductive. I that again makes sense. I, little, little things I never would have thought about, you know, combining with electronics because it's safe. Yeah, that mm -hmm. would make sense. That makes make great sense. All right, so at the moment you are popping up and screwing in the frame or the actual uh, um, the, the radiator right now. Right, yeah, I'm doing the actual radiator right now. Gotcha, okay. I usually so put my case fans in first, but since mm -hmm. we have this, I was rolling on this, so I'll do my case fans after this. So, here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you and Christian, obviously, two great builders. You both build PCs every single day for CLX, but as of notice here, you have a different approach. What's your approach to building your cases out because obviously everybody's got their own procedure their own comfort level the thing the way that that just works for them uh let's talk about how your your process works for you yeah so i like to like once i get started on something like building the board i kind of go as far as i can until i need to grab a new component so i built my board um then put it in got my aio on it and got it on here um, sometimes I usually put my case fans in first, um, but since I was just rolling with the board, I decided to throw it in here. Um, but nothing wrong with either way. This is just kind of how I like to do it. So once I get this radiator mounted, I'm going to put in all of our case fans and then I'll start cleaning up the wires and plugging things in then. Gotcha. <clears throat> so speaking of things that were going on the motherboard, uh, this build does come with 32 gigs of dual channel memory. Uh, that is two 16 gig sticks. It's DDR4, 3600 RAM. That that's, feels pretty fast. Mm -hmm. um, I recently did a thing and uh, I'm still trying to figure out, because I had somebody ask me if I was in single channel or dual channel and I had no idea what that meant. What If you have, say if I add, because I did add two more sticks of RAM to my PC to take it from 16 to 32 gig, I left the originals in their spots, which was slot two and four mm -hmm. and then added the new sticks into slot one and three uh but the new sticks are slower so obviously that means it's going to bring the higher 
frequency RAM down a bit. But mm -hmm. what are the considerations when you're adding RAM to the system? Because my friend Mighty Endeavor here also brought up like, hey, <laughs> I have questions about whether or not what you did was effective. <laughs> what are considerations you have to do when you're making those kind of additions to a board? Yeah, so the big things, um, you want to be in dual channel if you can, um, like you mentioned. Um, so that's why we've got our RAM installed in two and four here, both those um, okay. the same channel. And if we had them, if we had, let's say we had one stick in three and four, we would be using two different channels for one. So they wouldn't, it would still work, um, but it wouldn't be as efficient as running both channels. Gotcha. And then, you know, okay. you can think about kind of, um, you know, what your plan is for the future as well. Like if you want to add more RAM, you know, maybe get higher capacity sticks. That way you've got a couple slots that are open that you can add to later. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, excellent point. I do love that front shot of it with because uh, with the perf all of the perforated rubber over there where you're putting mm -hmm. pulling the cords through. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I love about this case, it's so versatile. And it's got that center mount feature uh, for anybody who noticed that it's not, that board is not all the way on the back of the PC like a lot of cases are. These cases are great because they provide an exceptional level of airflow with that rear cavity in the back, which has a couple different purposes. So let's talk about those, what, what the, that rear entrance, uh, that rear section is back in behind the motherboard. Yeah, so that's a, it's a pretty much a cable management channel there. And this case has a cover that will cover that up as well. Um, once I get these fans in here, I can kind of show you that once we start cleaning yeah. it up. Um, oh yeah, that's a great shot right there. Um, so yeah, this middle channel is where we're gonna kind of put all of our cables at the end. Um, these front panel ones will run down here and but they'll end up looping back in. Nice, awesome. While we're talking about all of this when it comes to airflow, this has seven RGB fans that are going to be included. So you've got three on the bottom. They're going to be sucking air up through because because the case doesn't sit flat on the ground. It's got four four mounted feet on it. Mm -hmm. So it's going to bring air up through the top. We're going to be pushing it out through the top as well, uh, pulling that air right through that radiator, cooling down that uh, AIO so we can keep that CPU as cool as possible. Plus the one that you're mounting right now, and that is the rear exhaust fan that uh, will also be pulling air out. So we've got that flow going over your GPU along with its fans and of course, cooling down all the internal components for the system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this design for our bottom fans, our intake fans, um, we'll do that um, probably after this one. That whole tray pops out, which is really nice. And then you can mount nice. the fans to the tray and then just put the tray back in the case. Yeah. So Mighty Endeavor said it's a great case. I got it as, as as your case too. Nice, waiting for the new 7K series from AMD and 4K from Nvidia to get a new build. Mm. Interesting. Very nice. Interesting. Um, so those are obviously new processors coming out, which is gonna be fun. Mayakin says, I have the 011 DXL as well. Love it, hide storage drives back there too. Mm -hmm. Yes, I figured once we get that thing spun around, we'll talk a little bit about that and where the, P the power supply goes. Um, so Mighty Endeavor wants to know, uh, how much of a price difference are you expecting with the new parts coming to market? That's a good question. That is a good question. I wouldn't even know what to expect on that. It's up to whatever AMD and, and Intel want to do there. I'm sure buying it both will be cheaper than buying it individual. Yeah. That's all I know. Should be, <laughs> yeah. Right? Should be. I'm sure it'll be a pretty standard price increase, you know, yeah. like usual. Everything has gotten more expensive now, so that's a thing too. Speaking of things, I did notice that you're wearing you're wearing a very clear CLX shirt and hat. You can get mm -hmm. CLX apparel also right here on our website at clxgaming.com. Yeah, we've got some really cool jackets as well. Once it gets a little colder yeah. temperatures, I'm sure you'll see me and Christian in those as well. Yeah, the uh, uh, well, I was really jazzed when I saw because George was wearing one of the pullovers at okay, PAX, yeah. uh, which is great. I love the design. It's it's not too busy, but it's very well branded. It is. Was Did he have a red or a gray one on? Uh, he had the gray one on. The gray one on? That's the one I have too. <laughs> yeah. They both look really good. Yeah, they do. All right, so we're getting that top fan uh, put in there. As you can see on the back, we've got Cable's coming through and we'll deal with the cable management here in a few. It's also a good spot 
to see, uh, it was also a good spot to see where the drive bays are. And those are hot swappable drive bays. Mm -hmm. And that means you can just slide a drive right in there once you've mounted it in the little, in, in the frame. What's, what are some of the advantages of having the ability to do that? In a case like this, the the biggest advantage um, coming out of where those hard drives mount are the SATA power and SATA data cables, and those are going to already be plugged in. Um, so I'll plug all those in, um, and then you can just install your hard drive, and that's it. Um, typically, if you're adding a drive, you obviously need to add another cable, so that can be that can be kind of intimidating. Opening everything up, making sure you're plugging it into the right SATA port on the board. So being able to avoid that is really nice. It, it's definitely one of my favorite things about this case is that um, that hot swappable bay. Yeah. Uh, it looks like we've got. Mo I was just peeking at the ports on the front. Multiple ports on the front of the OX, uh, of the O11, the XL, mm -hmm. which is nice. Now you're putting together the frame uh, for the bottom three fans, correct? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. So this has popped out of the of the bottom right here. It just slides in here. There's a couple screws. Um, nice. So we pop that out. We're gonna mount our fans to it, and then we can put all of them in. And then the while fun we're doing begins. that, yeah. The uh, the one of the things to keep in mind is that when you're pulling air in, you want to try and keep. Last thing anybody wants to be blowing dust or dirt or cat mm -hmm. fur or or animal hair into your PC build, which is why these come with a great set of filters on that you can just pull them right out of the bottom, shake it off, wash it off, uh, and then put it back in for a really clean experience and to keep everything inside nice and tidy, especially with a white build. Um, it, it, it's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've talked about it a lot, but it's it's yeah. just so, it's good to talk about because the, the easiness of cleaning everything, just pulling a filter off, wiping it down, like it's yeah. so easy to do. I will say that I'm, I I, I admire that and I, I am excited to, to finally get a build that actually has that because as I went and looked at my current gaming PC, which whose manufacturer we shall not name, um, <laughs> does not have any filters like that at all which I thought was really bizarre, which does explain why I'm cleaning it out consistently. Mm. Yeah. Um, weird question, does CLX be based in the US or uh, Canada or somewhere else? And uh, yes, uh, in Kansas, yeah, Wichita, right Kansas. Wichita, Kansas, yep. Yep. Right here. Yeah. Well, it's, a good, it's a good question, Endeavor. It's a nice central location. I have a couple friends who are, uh, uh, who I have from Impact Props, they make all sorts of amazing, uh, I would say, real life models of so many different characters, from the Destiny characters to all of the Halo characters. They build some of the most amazing suits I've ever seen, and they do all sorts of content. Well, I've known them since like 2015 at my very first event, and uh, Mikey, who was kind of like all of our little brother, uh, finally got engaged yesterday. So um, hopefully I'll be uh, popping over near you to uh, go to that wedding, which would be really cool. Oh, that is. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. So we're getting those finally in there. Any tips for how to, uh, what you should be doing with your cables to make sure that they never touch the fan uh, because it does make a horrific sound? Yeah, so what I'm, what I'm doing right now, um, I've got my fans mounted into the plate right here. Um, and I'm gonna throw a zip tie. Uh, I'm gonna get the cables. Um, kind of tight right here throw a zip tie around it for a good look and this will also prevent them from moving around and getting into those fan blades nice yeah the uh i was in fact cleaning out my pc yesterday and accidentally touched one of the fan blades it was scary turned on. i was like oh my god <laughs> yeah it's more scary like it's more shocking than it is painful but uh oh yeah yeah it's you're afraid of breaking it. It sounds like it's going to mm -hmm. come undone, but it, it doesn't do anything to the fan at all. In fact, it's yeah. not harmful, but it just sounds a mess. It does. So, okay, we're getting that done. So those are our bottom three. We've got our top three mm -hmm. already installed. We've got our rear vent installed. Yeah. And then the last thing I guess we'll need to put in is the graphics card. We can talk a little bit about that as well. This is a Founders Edition 3080, as you mentioned before. So it's direct from NVIDIA. It's not a secondary offshoot. Uh, what are the primary differences or are there any advantages to getting a card that is 
third party. Yeah, so like, because you've got like EPGAs, you've got MSIs, everybody's got their little flavor for it. Yeah, everyone's got their own uh, take on it. Uh, some advantage from uh, purchasing some of those from those other manu manufacturers. Um, typically, they'll have a pretty big heat sink on it, a big cooler, and it might come with a little bit higher uh, base frequency on there. So it might be a little okay. bit faster card. Um, and yeah, and they've got a lot of models. You might even find one that's cheaper that they have just a pretty generic um, blower fan on, so you can save some money that way. Okay. But they'll have well, I mean, like they'll have options to fit every budget on those. Yeah. And when they say Founders Edition, what are they talking about? So Founders Edition um, just means that it has this cooler on and direct from NVIDIA. So gotcha. it used to be okay. called Reference, and it and it looked it looked a little different. It's the same black and gray themes, um, but they had a blower fan on there. Um, then I think it was with the 10 series is when they changed to Founders. Uh, yeah, I remember that was the first time I ever heard uh, the term Founders Edition. I thought, oh, maybe it's the first 100 people. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It does kind of make you think something like that. <clears throat> All right, look at that solidly in there so now we're going to start working on the cable management that's right yeah so i'm working on my fans that are coming up on the top here i'm not going to get them okay. all the way done i'm just going to put a, a zip tie around them to hold them in place and then i'm going to pr uh, plug in the front panel of the of the case to okay. the motherboard uh what is your preferred way of clasping or or combining all of the cords in a specific area so I like to get them in, in one grouping if they're all my top fans and back fan, if they're coming in um, at about the same area, I try to kind of make them into one cable, um, like one bundle to work with. Okay. And keep that cable as straight as, as I can until you know they reach their destination. Uh, Mighty Endeavor does have a question. Uh, do you ever import parts outside the US for custom builds? Um, it just kind of depends. I I haven't seen any recently. We mostly get our distribution um, through through various distribution channels here. Excellent here in question. the states, yeah. One thing we definitely want to uh, impress upon people. I know we say this each week for those who have been coming to the show for quite a while, but uh, it just makes everybody's life easier if we just say it. In the event that you do have to change something out on your build, whether you get it from CLX or otherwise and you pull those panels off, it's probably best to take a picture with your cell phone so that you can see how everything was routed, how all the cables were managed to begin with, and that way, once you've added or taken out or upgraded the parts that you need, you can then put all the cables back the way that they came so that you're making sure that you're maximizing your airflow and the ability for your motherboard, motherboard to be cooled and you're not blocking any channels where, uh, where air would be able to escape or vent. Yeah, that's a great tip. <laughs> that might be one of the best tips that we're ever going to give you. Take a picture of that. Yeah. And and the only reason that I say that and know that is because I did not do that uh, on my very first PC. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, cable cable management was a was a hot mess. So. <laughs> yeah, sure, that was fun. Yeah. So. Oh, Mike has got a good question. Considering the Sakura Blossom theme in, of this case, has anyone ever requested that uh, the, the Sakura GPU on it? I did not know there was one. Or whether you could, I don't know if you can print on them. That's an yeah. excellent question. Yeah, it would depend on the cooler, whatever card you're using, but some of them we could, and, and no, I don't believe we've got that request yet. But it would depend a lot on which card you're getting. Uh, from a design standpoint, Mike, and good brain smarts right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, good idea. All right, getting all those through on the back side. Uh, as far as the 3080, uh, yeah, the 3080 goes, this is the 3080 10 gig. Uh, the 3080s do come in three different flavors. There's the 3080 10, the 3080 12, and the 3080 Ti. I don't think I'm leaving any Right, Nicole's like, it'll happen now. I don't think I'm leaving any versions out. Um, is, is there a big performance difference 
between a 10 gig and a 12 gig? Um, so there will be a slight performance difference, and where you're going to see that difference most is based on which game you're playing. If the game you're playing does require more VRAM, obviously you're going to get a better performance with the 12 gig. Um, but the biggest performance would be going to that 3080 Ti. Gotcha. Gotcha. Sounds, sounds good. And that's a full size that comes with one HDMI and four, I believe it's four. one HDMI, four deep, three or four DP, uh, three display DPs. ports. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and that's it. So I, I know that should seem, feels like everybody should know this, but uh, not a lot of people do. Why is there, what's the big difference? Let's start with the big difference between HDMI and DisplayPort. We've talked about it before, but I want to re-impress upon people like the, the big advantages of DisplayPort over HDMI. Yeah, so the, the first thing you want to look at, I guess if you're, you know, starting this conversation is like what monitor do you have because um, you're going to want a display port connection if you're going to go past 60 hertz um, for that refresh rate and the resolution there so that's that's where i start out with on that um, display port hdmi is obviously the most common i mean i feel like every device you have that plugs into anything has hdmi yeah um, but display port is um, is a better connectivity there yeah uh, I know that I know DisplayPort can carry twice as much data through it as mm -hmm. the as an as an HDMI. I believe it's twenty something gigs, twenty one point six gigs for uh, for DisplayPort, and uh, HDMI is two, ten point two gigs. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a couple different variants of DisplayPort, obviously as well as HDMI. The higher the capacity, the, the higher the number, the higher revision, the better the performances on that. Um, there's also many more things that can be transmitted through DisplayPort than HDMI. So uh, obviously HDMI is utilized for connecting end-to-end -end single devices. You know, you're gonna plug it mm. into your monitor, plug it into your TV, uh, plug it into your spare display, but DisplayPort is interesting because it can split these signals multiple times. You could do one DisplayPort and have it actually power up to eight devices. Like send signal to them with the right splitters. It's, which is wild. I think that's, yeah, that's pretty impressive. It's baffling to me. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it's got it's got a pretty high, it's got an exceedingly high bit rate, uh, 4,600 4, bit rate on it. So, mm. which is very interesting. Yeah, I know when I first got my current monitor now, I've got a 2K at 144, and that's when, that's when I really was like, that's when I learned what DisplayPort was, honestly. Yeah. The connections look very similar. They're definitely different. You can't plug one into the other, but they look Correct. a little similar. Uh, and ironically, so we as we were prepping for the show today, we I went to look this up because I was like, all right, I want to be able, we want to talk about some of these things on the show. And the first thing I came across was a comparison of old school DisplayPort. <laughs> and I'll be honest, my original experience with the DisplayPort was that big, wide, fat looking. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not shaming the, the th it was just a, it's a very thick fat connector that's got all these pins in it and then one little pin in it over there in the on the side mm -hmm. and there was like um I that's a DVI that was a DVI and I always assumed DisplayPort and DVI were the same thing very different very different but the DVIs I'd ever experienced were only videos I could never get sound going through DVI so I for the longest time assumed incorrectly I might add that DisplayPort was the same thing. It would only do video, which is completely mm. wrong. Absolutely 100% incorrect. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, a camera said, chimed in, said, just got my CLX Raw Battle Box a month ago, and it's absolutely awesome. amazing. Thank you. We're so glad that you got it. We're really happy. I'd hear that you're enjoying it. Um, it's always it's always fun. Can we? Do you mind if I ask a couple of questions? Uh, and is it a camera? Are you using it for photo, for gaming, for media production, or just for as a general computer? We're always excited to hear how you're using the device that you get from us. Yeah, and, and definitely. Thanks for coming in and chat and letting us know. We always like hearing <laughs> hearing that. So, uh, how long? So, camera asks, how long can this thing be on for? Rough estimate, and it's a it's a gaming and streaming is what camera's using it for. Perfect. Uh, yeah, if it's a, if it's a battle box, what what do you uh, what would you say? Yeah, I, I mean, I would say leave it on as long as you want. I don't think there's any, um, you know, 
time to shut it down. I mean, just know, you know, it will affect your energy bill if it's on 24-7. Um, not a whole lot, <laughs> but it is, it is something there. Um, <laughs> and then you're going to want to update Windows every now and then. But, yeah, there, there's yeah. no harm in having it on. Well, and if you've got a, and if you've got a liquid AIO on it, it's uh, that's definitely going to add to that longevity of being able to, to push it. So. Yeah, and when you're not using it, I mean, it'll you know you can set your sleep settings so it goes to sleep, so it's barely consuming anything, you know. Yeah, doing that low power. Mm-hmm. Nice. So on the back, you're you're now getting all of those, all of those strapped in. Mm-hmm. Before we get to connecting our graphics card. Perfect. Uh, camera says, huge Twitch guy. Followed y'all right after I got the PC. Ah, heck yeah. Welcome to the nice. show. Glad to have you. Uh, as you know, as a streamer myself, uh, it's having the right setup and the right PC is so important. It is, you know, especially, and, and one of the things I love the most about this it, with CLX is that you get to customize it to fit exactly what your needs are. We've got people, everything from architects to uh, gamers, content creators, video editors, audio editors, music producers. Each person has a different need and each person's got a different profile that they want to build their PC to. That's one of the things that I absolutely love about uh, about the CLX's site. In fact, let me go ahead and ask uh, Jason. We wanna talk about the site real quick. And to do this in, there we go. Um, so let's talk about how you can get your hands on one of these amazing machines. Uh, for all of your gaming needs, you can always find out how to customize your build to your specifications through our website at clxgaming.com. From choices in chassis, in cases, CPUs, GPUs, RAM, and more, we give you the autonomy to be able to customize your device personally. Now, some people might not be super comfortable choosing their parts, but don't worry. We have a configuration uh, element built into our site that tells you if you've got something that's not compatible with another. And the wonderful thing about that is you don't have to be an expert to be able to get everything to work correctly. Whether you're gonna be comparing and bringing in your motherboard, if you know what your CPU is and you know what your GPU is, you can start there and then select the right elements and pieces that are going to fit in that build for you. With a multitude of cases of many different sizes, designs, colors, and styles, it's your one-stop shopping center for all things PCs. But one other thing to take note, you don't have to build it yourself. We have many, many different models of pre-builds available for you right here on the site, and it's all at clxgaming.com. So head on over, say hi, check out what we've got. We think you'll be impressed, and it's definitely gonna help you take your gaming to the next level. There we go, there's my show. Cause yeah, I may be biased, but I'm also a fan. All right, now you're pulling out the, uh, the the PSU at the moment. That's right. Yeah, we've got the power supply here. So let's uh, let's talk about the power supply. That's a 750 watt EVGA Supernova uh, mm -hmm. GT. It's an 80 plus gold edition, and it is modular. That's so, right. So, yeah, what are some of the advantages of this, and why is this a good power supply to choose? Yeah, so my favorite thing about this power supply, obviously it's modular. Um, the, the design of these is great. All of our um, all of our cables are gonna plug into here. We obviously don't have any cables coming out um, and that's what fully modular means. So yeah. um, we've got our bundle of cables that come with it as well. Um, I'm gonna open this and just pick out the cables that we need for the build. We'll send the rest uh, with the system in case the customer needs them. Um, but it's gonna, it's gonna just provide a cleaner look, better airflow. Um, and just an easier tie-up. I love the ribbon cables that come with it. <clears throat> yeah, these are, these are good-looking cables. Yeah. So I'm going through these. And Obviously, those... need a 24-pin CPU. Oh, go ahead, DJ. Oh, no, I was say that was exactly what I was going to ask, is uh, how do you identify which one goes where? I mean, obviously, the, the big one, the chunky one, is going to mm -hmm. be put on the big, the big strip. Yeah. What, so what are those called? The the twenty four pin is is the easiest one to see. Um, it's obviously the thickest. Um, then going from there, we have our CPU and our VGA. Now these are the ones that you can easily get confused here because um, they're both eight pins. VGA um, is for our video card, and it's going to be a okay. six plus two. You can see here. See, I've oh, got a okay. six and one, and yeah. there's two here because some video cards only need the six, some need the full eight, so they split it like that. Um, then our okay. CPU is an eight as well, but it's two fours. So um, 
we've got you know two fours here that make oh. V8. And these are labeled nicely. They say CPU, and these ones will say VGA on them. Um, depending on what uh, brand of power supply you go to, they might be labeled a little differently. So definitely check the book. Uh, make sure you're plugging into the right thing. It shouldn't go in. They should be keyed a little bit. This plastic is actually cut a little differently on the connectors, so they shouldn't plug in. Um, but if you push okay. hard enough, you could probably force it in there. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, that actually makes a lot more sense. I'm really glad they started labeling these things uh, years before. <laughs> years ago mm -hmm. was not the case necessarily. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was not the case. Well, uh, now, this is not an RGB, is it? Right. No, this is not RGB. Yep. The power supply. It's not yeah. RGB. However, we do offer RGB power supplies to just add that much more color and that much more pizzazz, I guess you could say, uh, to your build. Yeah. So. So another so cool now, thing about modular, yeah. what I'm about to do uh -huh. here, um, I have my cable. It is not plugged in to the power supply yet. I'm going to plug it into the motherboard and then just run the cable out the back. Um, just is that usually the best thing there. to do for <clears throat> ease yeah. of? I would use. definitely recommend it. This case is really nice. Um, we have a lot of space here up top, even with the liquid cooler installed. Um, but some cases, if you're putting a liquid cooler up top, it's going to cover your uh, your ca uh, cable management hole a little bit, so it can be a lot harder to get in. Um, and gotcha. that's where you would definitely want to do this first. And as far as the 80 plus gold, that's that. Again, we've talked about this many different times. Um, there's there's several different levels. Um, bronze. There's bronze. Is it silver? I, there's not a silver. Yeah, it's, yeah. It starts yeah, out yeah. with like no. It's just eighty plus. It's it's the <clears throat> label's white, and then it goes up to okay. bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and titanium. Yep, and of course uh, that. It's not often we'll see a titanium in a build like this. We've had one platinum come through that we built on the show, uh, which was impressive. And that machine, I still wish we knew what that machine was gonna be used yeah, for. I do too. Cause I believe yeah. that was like a scarab. I think it was a small one, wasn't it? Yeah, it was interesting. Oh, I, was I'm cool. Yeah, I'm always fascinated. If, you, if you're if you in chat and you've picked up a CLX machine and you feel comfortable letting us know, please uh, let us know what uh, what you're using it for. We are always fascinated to see uh, what kind of builds go to what kind of purposes. So there you go. Uh, as you can see on the top frame, there is space for the, mag is it the magnetic cover? Yeah, mm -hmm. there we go. Yep. So that's your magnetic uh, filter. And it's great because those are so easy to pull off. There's nothing, you just slide it right off the top. You can wipe it down and then put it right back in place. It helps, again, keep things out of your computer. And that's super helpful and very important in ensuring that you're not risking any dust getting in there, etc. So. Yeah, over time that dust can build up quite a bit and that just kind of acts like a big blanket for your computer keeping heat in. So you obviously yeah. want to avoid that, clean those out every now and then doesn't have to be super frequent, but every couple months or so. Great, I'm loving this. I'm also loving the fact that we're getting to see the side of that uh, that motherboard in this shot. Yeah. Lots of different, again, lots of different heat sinks on that, which I am very impressed with. This is it kind of a nice shot too, to kind of show you how we installed the 240 in the top of this as well. Yeah, yeah, I dig it. I like it. <clears throat> so, <laughs> I free says, I use my CLX build to watch P Steph build other CLX builds. Hey, my well, man. you know, <laughs> my man, Ivory. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the hilarious. best use for one, not biased yes. at all. Yeah, the more I've been learning, you know, the more I've been doing the show, the more I learn as well as all of you learn. Uh, again, if you have any questions whatsoever, please. Pop them in the chat, we can answer them to the best of our ability. Uh, I, One of the things I would definitely say that I have become much more educated on is motherboards. Like the things to look for, the things that are, you know, that are there. Back when I was, when I first started building my own PCs by my, like myself was probably in the uh, early to mid 2000s. And okay. I thought I was, thought I was cool. I now understand why several of them died because of, uh, I would say there was, there was a ID 10 T error between my chair and my keyboard. <laughs> I was the idiot <clears throat> choosing the wrong pieces, which is one of those things that I kind of, that I, that I, uh, I 
still going to just reinforce once again is the fact that we've got that configurator built into the website and it tells you, hey, that's not going to work. It won't even let you add the build to the cart if it's not completely configured appropriately. So <clears throat> while you're doing this, uh, I would love to let's do this. I, I would love us to take a look. So the, the Sekura edition was has been in the works for a while. The design is beautiful, but I don't think anybody understands, or maybe unless you were actually at PAX, you may not understand uh, the extent to which the decorations can be personalized to your environment. And with that, I would love to take a look right now at some of our adventures at PAX West over the week, over that PAX West weekend and give you a chance to see what we got. DJ Blue PDX here, host of CLX Gaming Foundry Live at the Washington State Convention Center in Seattle, Washington for PAX West 2022. As part of the Gamer Days event with Intel, we've got our own booth here, as you can see behind me, featuring the brand new RAW 011 Sephora Season Edition PC. You can get your hands on so many different ways to build this out. For us here at the show, we wanted to go big, we wanted to come strong. It features an Intel i9-12900KS on a Asus Z690 Formula motherboard. It's got 32 gigs of 5600 RAM. It's got a two terabyte NVMe. And when you've got something that beefy, you've got to make sure you have a GPU that matches it. And that's why we put in the RTX 3090 from NVIDIA. Over the weekend, multiple different streamers from all over will be featuring their content inside. Behind me is JSG. She's streaming right now. Theme to meet the exact art style in our PC. As you can tell, everything from plushies to candies, it is the best looking booth here at the show. DJ Blue PDX here, back with Nicole, the marketing manager for everyone here at CLX, and she's actually the one who designed the booth. Tell us a little bit about what went into this concept. Uh, yeah, so um, I don't know if you guys already spoke about the Sakura theme um, that we did for the frame, but I mean, this is a very, um, no, I don't want to say uh, niche space, but this is uh, big in like DIY, Hawaii, anime themed um, spaces right now. It's big on Instagram, so that was kind of my inspiration for this room and I feel like it's um, a, a part of the community that doesn't really get a lot of love. We don't see a lot of I noticed when we were in there doing our podcast yesterday was everything that goes out of the, from the keyboard to the Elgato stream deck, uh, the mouse pad and all, it's all part of that. And I, I think this booth stands out because of how bright it is and how past, like pastels, they stand out, they pop. Was that also part of why you chose this? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, a lot, a lot of the times, like in gaming, we've been we're so used to black and blue, black and red, black and green. We wanted to switch it up and have a lighter feeling to it. Well, and as you can see with some of our content creators who are also themed to match, uh, JSG in there, the pink headphones, the hair, the horns, it all just feeds into this incredible space. When you get in there, it's very home -like. It's very comfortable. That's what I was going for. That's what I was going for. It's, it's supposed to mimic a setup that you would do for yourself at home. So you want the plushies, you want the comfort. I was even going to do a mongolia, but we ran out of time for that. <laughs> well, as you mentioned, one of the best things about being able to customize your PC with CLX is being able to make sure that it fits your theme, fits your brand, fits your channel, and most importantly, from the inside out, meets your needs. To find out more about this edition and other options, head on over to our website, clxgaming.com. It's like that, and you know, as content creator, your brand is uh, your brand is so important, and especially making sure that you're on brand with what you're doing. That's a great example of wonderful themologies in here uh and the noble tv says it's a beacon on any of them for yes noble tv uh <laughs> a respawn all-star and uh actually a recent addition to some of the uh casters for halo welcome noble good to see you and yes uh, on the show floor it is easy to find me because anytime i walk under a light i blind the least anybody within a 10 feet radius i'm gonna have to figure out how to adjust that <laughs> we'll get it tattooed Tattooed hair. There we go. That's a thing. <laughs> the beacons on it. Gondor calls for aid. <laughs> yes. 
I know people are doing that. <laughs> oh, you're getting is, the, yeah. It's in the hair tattoo. But the problem is when it starts to fade, then your hair starts to fade. Right? It gets a little blue. I, 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 well, I was... I know that I look like Lex Luthor's stunt double, but I also thought about, <laughs> uh, you know, whether or not I could just go with a blue arrow. Hmm. You know, being... Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. That'd be cool. Could be fun. But yeah, there we go. Uh... Let's see. Okay, so now we've we've you've been adjusting and working on the while well, we're watching that you were adjusting and working on the cables. Mm -hmm. uh, where are we at now? So right now I've got all my fans plugged into our controller box and I'm cleaning those up. So once we get that gun, I, I do have my power supply installed. Um, so once cool. I'm done with these fan cables, we'll plug in the cables to the power supply, and then I have a bunch of SATA cables to plug in, and then that's Perfect. it. So. Speaking of the power supply, now the power supply on this model is mounted in the bottom in that back channel. So not mm -hmm. only does it have its own person, it's got its own fan, but it's got that back channel for the airflow to provide additional cooling to the device. It also aids in cooling down the motherboard as well because you've got that, you've got the flow. It's not like it's stuck right up against the back panel, which uh, prior, like years ago, all PCs came with a motherboard mounted right back, like it was right up against a metal panel on the back and oftentimes those weren't vented so mm -hmm. you know and I, I feel like that probably contributed to a large amount of overheating in a lot of builds back you know back in the day i'm not going to name names because i feel like that would be bad but uh yeah i would say early 2000s back when pcs were just finally really getting becoming common you know for what you were doing mm -hmm. you know we'd finally gotten off of 56k modems <laughs> Can always tell when somebody in the house gets online because they try and go in and it wakes everybody up. There was no way to keep those modems silent ever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can see that the, the PSU down below, the two drive bays up above. Which one is going to be, which one of those drive bays is going to be used for the hot swap? So but, are they um, both or? Both of them are, yep. Then they, oh, cool. each, okay. each of those bays can hold two drives. So we're going to have. The capability to have four extras in here. Yeah. Okay. No. Well, I was gonna say, it, but I could say it. Yeah. Your your non CLX build does overheat. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is why you know take a look at take a look what we offer over at clxgaming.com. Um, and uh, Drake Sub Zero, welcome. And been building PCs for over 25 years and still loving it. Yeah, still doing it? Yes, absolutely. It's well, it's fun. It's kind of cathartic. It's it's one of those things. A lot of uh, my community members from the Respawn All Stars have have come by and said when they watch is that you know watching the process of the, doing this. It's it is methodical. It's procedural, but it's especially when you get that clean look for your cable management. It's so relieving because you've done it so wonderfully well. That's right. Yeah. It yeah. is one of those things. It's like a lot of work goes in, uh, you know, every one of them, just time. And it's kind of all leads up to the one big moment of turning it on. So it's fun. Uh, my yeah, my very first PC that I built with uh, with an AMD processor was the AMD Athlon XP. Hmm. <laughs> that's that's how long ago. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. That, but you're going to be lucky if you find a reference on that. They're going to say, please, please see the microfish. <laughs> It's not even on the internet. <laughs> right. My first one uh, I built was AMD as well. I think it was a Phenom 2. Mm -hmm. Like a, I had like a GTX 560, I think. So. Oh, I, uh, so I had a, <laughs> I did a dumb, I remember on my, one of my builds and it was, I never noticed it mm -hmm. until probably I would say probably a year and a half after having it. I had a friend of mine did this recently on her build a couple years ago, uh, but I had plugged in to the HDMI, not to the HDMI, to the, to the display port, not display port. It's the, what's the VGA, the little VGA thing? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. On the card out, it also had a VGA card in it. Oh. And I used the motherboard instead of the actual cards. <laughs> You and know, that was also, I believe, that one is the one that had the DVI port on it. Yeah. What? That's, that's one of the most frequent tech support calls we get. Um, so we do we do put um, a nice uh, cover on the back of the I.O. shield with the narrow showing you where to plug it. 
plug in to. You want to be plugging into your video card and not the motherboard. Um, yes, but absolutely. yeah, it's it's the mo it's really common. We I had to laugh because we were playing Rainbow Six Siege and our friend Hiccup was just like, I get such low, I get such low um, frame rates, and we're like, what do you have in your system? She had a pretty beefy system, and she was mm -hmm. running with a, um, I believe she had a 1080 in her system. But she was plugged into the the, the motherboard. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. We were like, "Well, show us a picture of what's going on." And she's like, "Well, wait a minute. There's okay. There's two HDMI's on here. Well, which one are you plugged into? Well, the one on the on the board. Is there another one? Yeah. There's one going sideways. Yeah. Sweetheart, do that that's, one. That's your <laughs> <laughs> that's your graphics card. And then she became a an absolute boss at Rainbow Six Siege. Suddenly she wasn't running it at 25, 30 FPS. She was yeah. pulling a full 100. Man, she walked in and cleaned house. We're like, why are you suddenly so good? Yeah. Cheats. Nope, HDMI ports. That's Got why. that handicap <laughs> taken care of right there. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. funny. Mike, it's integrated GPU on the CPU. Yeah, that's a fun mm -hmm. one. Which is nice, but the processors are now, when they look at, um, when they look at uh, whether or not you're gonna have a graphics card, you have options of going with a GPU that doesn't have integrated gra or a CPU that doesn't have integrated graphics with it. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I'm not mistaken, that is the KF series for Intel. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a KS series for Intel. Is that similar or different? That S doesn't show up too often, and I couldn't tell okay. you if that had onboard graphics or not. Yeah, I only sold. I only ever. Uh, I've only ever seen that one time. Uh, so the 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 K is me, it means it can be overclocked. The mm -hmm. KF means it's overclockable and it doesn't have a GP uh, a, a built-in graphics on it. Yep. This is a Ryzen 9 5900X, so it is overclockable, but it does include an onboard uh, onboard graphics for the CPU. Correct? Um, I am not sure on this 5900X. Uh, AMD is a little different as far as they have that G designator. Um, I believe that we talked about last time that does have the that's onboard graphics. It, that's um, right. Okay. But it doesn't always mean that if it doesn't have that G, it doesn't. So it just depends yeah, on okay. what you're doing. No, you're no, you're absolutely right. I, I was I was thinking backwards. Uh, the it does not. This does not have graphics on the on the die. Um, for the for the X, if you have G, that would mean apparently mean graphics. Mm -hmm. So interesting, different companies, different different uh, nomenclature, different referencing. So always good to know know these things. Yeah. Yeah. So and of course the Ryzen fifty nine hundred X. It's uh, it's a super powerful. I I, I know we're kind of bouncing around on parts here, people, but this thing has a it's got a sixty four meg L three cache, uh, and you said it's hyper threading. Or mul uh, not multi not hyper threading, multi threading. Yeah. Got mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Um, to me, and the big difference between multi versus hyper? Um, it's just multi is AMD's version and hyper is Intel. Got it. Okay. Got it. Easy peasy. Yeah. So we're throwing in the will video be card right now. Oh. Awesome. Here comes the we're, 3080. We are getting there. I'm always surprised and shocked at how heavy they are graphics cards like mm -hmm. they're not light at all whatsoever they, yeah they really aren't and even you know usually you know you associate the size of it with that but even this founders one i mean if you held it this is probably heavier than what you think just because of all the copper that's in there to cool it yeah so uh oh, ivory says yeah. s just stands for special edition it's true meaning differs between cpus oh gotcha okay gotcha um, and I know we had a special edition, so I believe we had a special edition for the one that was in the PAX build, um, along with a unique, very unique motherboard that was on that PAX build, uh, which was gorgeous. Gorgeous. There were buttons and digital readouts and all sorts of things on there. Um, and there, there's actually a lot of different types of AIO, what do, you, what do you call that, the cap? Like you can get LED caps, you can get digital readouts mm -hmm. on those caps. Some boards come with uh, with an actual with a small screen built into them to show you your stats. Yeah, we've got some people here that uh, they've got some customizable AIO caps that they run like GIFs on. So there's one that's got like Baby Yoda, like a whole scene from that, which oh, is pretty wow. cool. So that's you know, hilarious. So yeah, even more ways to customize and, and brand 
your PC in whatever way makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. I like it. What I would like to see is whatever game you're playing, you're using your AIO cap for the screen. I think that would be pretty hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, I suck really bad at Rainbow Six Siege now. Can you imagine how bad it would be if my screen got smaller? Yeah. <laughs> There's some, uh, there was uh, GPUs that had screens on them as well that you could put stuff on. There was one, I, I believe it was an MSI that we all really liked here because it had like uh, an egg, kind of like a Tommy Gotcha. Or, uh, oh yeah. And um, the more you gamed, like the egg would open and then the dragon would like level up the longer you gamed. That's, it's like, that's so that's cool. Amazing, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, Mayakins asked, do you do you guys use GPU bracket slash leash? Yeah, we will, um, just kind of depending on the necessity of it. Um, some of the brackets that come with the cards are honestly not that great, and some are really good. Um, and now what we're starting to see is some motherboards will even have a bracket, like some ASRock boards. They will use the bottom right uh, motherboard mount holes, and they'll have like a little arm that'll attach to hold your GPU there. Um, okay. Which, th those are my favorite ones to use. Here's a question, because mm -hmm. I've never heard the term before. Um, GPU leash. What, what is that? I, I just assumed he's talking about the, the bracket there. Oh, got it, okay. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if there was like an actual- Could be wrong. Cor corded way of strapping it down the motherboard. Yeah. But yeah, these cards are big and heavy and uh, it's, uh, again, this, the framework that this motherboard is built on is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. It's it's probably one of the one of the heftier and beefier motherboards that I've ever seen us do. So and everything we ship, if I mean if it's got a a card in it, we are going to be putting foam in there to hold it in place. So sometimes we yeah. can ship it better and more secure without having some of the brackets in. It just kind of depends, like I said, on on which card it is and what bracket it came with. Oh, so I was right. Uh, it is a uh, a rope that hangs from the top to that you just kind of, I would assume just clip under it where it attaches or it's got a frame that just holds the back end so it keeps the things balanced. Okay, that's it's cool. called called e-leashes. Ah, excellent. E-leashes. I have not done I, one of those before. Yeah. Of course, all these little things. You guys realize that after a show, I sit here for an hour and look up all the <laughs> stuff that I don't know. <laughs> Forever, it's just like interesting. And then I fall down the Google hole of... Uh, researching and looking through all the stuff. Yeah. Eel noble. Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I'm putting so, on this panel right here, and we're about ready to go. I'll turn it and around again, that, so you can see it. But And again, that panel goes over the top to cover all the different threading for the cable management. Uh, makes it a little bit easier. Keeps the airflow a little bit more consistent. Is so. that is that pretty oh, much sorry, what, what it is? That? Uh, so that back panel that you're putting on, I know we've, we've got, we yeah. attached those on the back over the top of the cable management. Is that mm -hmm. also for airflow and as well as cleanliness? Right, yeah. I think the Look big thing it's for is clean. Oh, perfect. Yeah, nice. so you can see all this right here. Um, this is our Type-C cable. It's a little bit higher up on this board, so unfortunately it's got to stick out a little bit. But like building PCs, I'm like, oh, I wish that could be a little lower. But just depends on the yeah. board design. But this is one of the reasons why we love the case. I mean, super clean. Managed all of our cables here. PSU right here, gonna be sucking in fresh air and blowing out the back. Won't be in with the, in with the other components. So I'll turn Excellent. this thing around and we'll put the panels back on and fire this thing up. I'm excited, this is gonna look great. Mm, so. Again, this is the Sekura edition. Uh, and while you're putting those on, oh yeah, that was, the, you wanna show that one more time? Yeah. The, that's, the, that's the magnetic sh filter we were talking about. Look at mm -hmm. that. It just goes up here right on top like that. Yep. I'll show you Super the two easy. on the back panel as well. Oh yeah, that's right. <clears throat> Those are nice too. There we go. Yeah. All right. So while you're putting those back on, let's mm -hmm. go ahead. Oh yeah, there it is. Two right There's here. There's a good shot of them. And this is where our power supply is gonna breathe through is on the bottom here. Awesome. All right, so this is of course, let's go ahead and cover what, uh, go over what we've got in this it is a secular edition. You can get this as part of the special editions from CLXGaming.com. Uh, if you'd like to know more, we can throw that link back in the chat. This is gonna come with a MSI NPG X570S 
uh, Edge Max Wi-Fi ATX motherboard. It's got a Ryzen 9 5900X in there with 32 gigs of DDR4 3600 RAM and an RTX 3080 10 gig graphics card. Uh, the operating system is going to be on a one terabyte Kingston NVMe M.2 and have a secondary Kingston NVMe one terabyte M.2 as it's uh, as a secondary drive. So you can put games on there, put your files on there. You can do a lot of different things with this. This, of course, is a raw edition PC, which is going to include seven CLX RGB fans and a 750 watt EVGA supernova power supply. Uh, and it's going to be coming in something we'll show you in a little bit. Uh, it, well, right before the end, it's going to be coming in our CLX sarcophagus packaging. This is included with a one-year warranty. It is lifetime labor and technical support, support one-year parts. So if you have any issues with your PC, just call us. Let us know. We can definitely walk you through and, and, and help you with that. There are up to three-year options for our warranty plans, and you can uh, upgrade that at the time of purchase. So... Uh, Celestial asks, does this case have a limited stock? Uh, we have plenty of stock right now. Um, mm -hmm. we, and, and we will be recurring. It isn't like once we sell out of this case, we'll be done. No, though, we have plenty of stock on this. All right. So moment of truth here. Yeah, yeah. This one, and we'll get this one. We're going to go ahead and see this thing in action. The lighting is going to be so great in this. Again, I love the way that it lights up the uh, it lights up the tree behind it. We're uh, finding just the right position. There we go. We're ready. Okay. Moment of truth. Let's do it. Moment of truth. Hey. Look at that. Good Christian grief. It's proud. gorgeous. Right? It all, <laughs> all works right up front. Yeah, this looks great. Got the RGBs light, lighting up on the RAM. Obviously, you've got that cap for the for the AIO the mm -hmm. lights behind the trees. Looks wonderful. Very reflective. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely great. And something else I want to show here too before we get off. I want to show this top panel. It hasn't got. That's my favorite part about this design. Um, just how we've got CLX in here. It didn't get enough love this show, so I got to give it some. This right. Oh here. wow! Look at that. Yeah, I love look at that. that. The That's CLXs awesome. CLXs and the flowers and everything. So really nice. Oh, that's cool. I dig it. I dig it. All right. Let's take a look at what went inside today's build for the very special edition Sakura build on our show. First of all, it's built inside of a raw O11 XL full tower. Now that's going to be with an MSI MPG X570S EdgeMax Wi-Fi motherboard. It's a pretty impressive motherboard. It's got an AMD Ryzen 5900X powered on there and it's gonna be cooled by an Enermax Liquimax 3 RGB 240 closed AIO liquid cooler. Now that also is have, gonna have 32 gigs of DDR4 3600 RAM that is going to be supporting this monster of a graphics card. It's got an NV <laughs> NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 10 gig. It's got two different hard drives that'll be installed. It has a one terabyte Kingston NVMe M.2 SSD for the operating system. And it also has another one as the secondary storage. So two terabytes of data in there. Uh, it's going to be powered by a 750 watt EVGA Supernova 750 GT. That's an 80 plus gold power supply and seven CLX RGB fans. And that's all going to be coming in the CLX sarcophagus packaging. All right. Well, if you, of course, if you have any questions, you'd like to know more about any of our builds, you can head on over to clxgaming.com to find out more. Make sure you follow us on YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter at CLX Gaming. And we are here every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific to Eastern for CLX Gaming Live. On behalf of everyone at CLX and Paul Steffens, our builder and technical expert, I'm DJ Blue PDX. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. See ya. Mm -hmm.